When war broke out in Europe in 1939, one thing was perfectly clear. Most Americans did not want to be involved. This was an understandable feeling following World War I. Tens of thousands of American soldiers had been killed defending France, and many Americans felt that the effort had been too costly and ultimately pointless. The United States had its own problems to deal with, they said. The focus of the United States in the 1930s, as it was around the world, was the Great Depression. Most Americans wanted to concentrate on getting the nation back to work, not on getting involved in other countries' wars. But the war was already on the way. As early as 1931, Japan had invaded Manchuria, a northern province of China. American leaders grew alarmed, but did nothing when Japan's incursion into Manchuria turned into an all-out war against China in 1937. Meanwhile, when Hitler and the Nazi Party came to power in Germany in 1933, he immediately set about nullifying the provision in the Treaty of Versailles that had barred German rearmament. The Allies complained, but made no attempts to stop Hitler. The economy soared, and a wave of nationalistic pride swept across the country as German factories produced the war materials. Hitler sought to bring all German-speaking countries together under his leadership, and in 1938, he began by annexing Austria. He followed this action by taking the Sudetenland in western Czechoslovakia. The Munich Agreement with Britain and France allowed Germany to absorb the Sudetenland as long as war was avoided. A few months later, Hitler seized the rest of Czechoslovakia. In 1939, Germany launched an invasion of Poland, and World War II had begun. Before war broke out, the United States' official policy had been to remain isolated from all foreign conflicts. Recognizing the dangers posed by Germany, however, Congress had passed a series of neutrality acts during the 1930s, which, among other things, allowed for the sale of American war materials to nations at war. When Italy, Germany, and Japan signed the Tripartite Pact in 1940, Congress began to realize that the U.S. might be going to war whether it liked it or not. Congress passed a bill for a peacetime draft to enlarge and train the Army and Navy. President Roosevelt lent naval vessels to Britain in exchange for military bases. And when the British ran short of money, President Roosevelt convinced Congress to pass the Lend-Lease Act so that war materials could continue to reach the beleaguered island. Isolationists persistently argued that the United States should stay out of direct conflict, but any possibility for avoiding war evaporated in the early morning of Sunday, December 7, 1941, when the Japanese launched a surprise attack against Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, bringing the U.S. into World War II. If the Allies had stopped Germany from rearming in the early 1930s, war in Europe might never have taken place. How might the world have been different if that had happened?